one minute. Thank you, Deb. Okay. You're welcome. I would Very like to call the meeting to order and begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Trustee Shapiro? Here. Trustee McGreal? Here. Trustee Dizel? Here. Trustee Ryan? Here. Trustee Michaels? Here. Trustee Dwyer is absent this evening, and Mayor Kitching is absent this morning, this evening. I'd like a motion would be in order to appoint a mayor pro temp. Make a motion to appoint Trustee Shapiro mayor pro temp for the evening. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Smart guy. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's board meeting. Good evening. Um, I'm going to actually, the, the first couple items on my agenda, uh, I have a closed session, which I'm going to move to the end to work along with the other closed session we have. And I'm also going to remove uh, num item number two, and the consent agenda, which is item J, and uh, we may or we may not be voting on that after the uh, closed session. Next thing I have on my list is a request for the approval of a resolution consenting to the renewal of a Cook County cl Class 6B real estate tax assessment classification for parcels number 24-20-400-22-0000 and 24-20-400-028-0000. And 24 20 400 029 000. It's 5919 West 118th Street at the Waterhawk LLC, the Architectural Metal Solutions and Corp., located in the village of Alsip, Illinois. The other thing I have is uh, I wanted to remind everyone about the Alsip Job Fair, which is uh, April 11, 2017, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Apollo Recreation Center at 12521 South Costner Avenue. The Alsip Job Fair Committee is seeking local businesses to participate in the job fair on April 11th. This is a great opportunity for businesses to showcase their organizations and recruit local talent. The Alsip Job Fair is being organized in cooperation with the Alsip Park District, the Village of Alsip, Alsip Chamber of Commerce, also, Marion Park Library Districts, Southwest Special Recreation Association, First Midwest Bank, GC America, and the Calumet Area Industrial Commission. And I believe that is all from the mayor's report right now. Um, Clerk Ben Heisen. I have the presentation of the minutes from February 20th, 2017 board meeting. I also have the presentation of the Freedom of Information Report for February 2017. There were 19 requests, and that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, attorney's Report? No report. Engineer's Report? Uh, the next thing is the uh, public forum. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak to anything that we have on our agenda or any other issues? Please feel free to come forward. Having heard from no one, we'll go to the standing committees. Under finance, 
I have a request for the approval of a list of payroll dated March 3rd, 2017, as follows. Under the earnings, I have a gross payroll of $381,627.43, minus the voluntary employee deduction in taxes of $139,658.76, for a net payroll of $241,968.67. Next, I have a request for the approval of accounts payable dated March 6, 2017, as follows. Under corporate, $441,178.52, Road and Bridge, $391,091. Under the Pulaski Corridor TIF, $750. Under Waterworks, $727,453.82. Under Heritage II, $478.59. For a grand total of all funds of $1,170,252.84. Next, I have the approval of an ordinance providing for the issuance of not to exceed 7,800,000 general obligation refunding bonds, series 2017 of the village of Alsip Cook County, Illinois, for the levy of direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal and interest of said bonds. I also have a request for the approval to engage in Bernardi Securities Incorporated as underwriters of the general obligation refunding bonds, tw series 2017. And I have a request for the approval to accept the attorney's recommendation of a six-year settlement in the amount of $30,381 for the 2011 through 2016 Griffith Laboratories property tax appeal located at one Griffith Center in Alsip, Illinois. This was a result uh, saving the village around $28,000. I also have the presentation of the minutes of the February 13, 2017 Finance Committee meeting, the presentation of the minutes of the February 15, 2017 Finance Committee meeting, and that is all I have from finance. Uh, Trustee Shapiro, yes. uh, just a quick question. Um, uh, to the finance director, there was a lot to digest in our packet re with regard to the refinancing. Could you give us an overview on, on what you're doing? Yes. Um, right. Um, right now, what we're doing on the ordinance and on the request for Bernardi Securities, um, the rates for municipal bonds have gone down a little bit. That allows us to, I'm going to say refinance, that's not the word we use in, in um, municipalities and, and bonds, um, but it's essentially like refinancing your house. Rates have gone down. Um, one bond, which is a 2005B bond, we're going to call early. And we're, it's called refunding, and essentially we're going to get a lower interest rate for that. For the 2009A bonds, that's not callable yet, but you can sort of get the money, lock it away, and when it becomes callable, you can do the same thing. Um, so in both cases, we're going to get a lower interest rate uh, for doing that, which means less taxpayer monies um, to paying those same bonds for uh, projects. So these are not new monies. These are not new projects. These are just essentially coming up with <coughs> savings on old projects. There was an added benefit in the 2009A bond. That was something called Build America bonds, which were not tax-exempt bonds. They had a subsidy from the federal government. They, were, um, they had a small range of time that they could be issued. The village issued it back then. Uh, the federal government did not live up to its expectations and what it had said in terms of subsidies. So subsidies have actually been less than what we thought they were going to be. And I say we, I was not at the village at the time, but the village thought it was going to be when it was issued and everyone thought it was going to be. So, and they've been proven to be very difficult to work with. So as an added benefit, there's less labor hours in doing this but um, on finance and it's a lot cleaner. Um, but it, essentially, it's saving a lot of money. My guess is it's going to be around 400000 um, but that fluctuates quite a bit depending on interest rates. The sooner we do this, the better. The next one was the um, engage our current underwriter. 
Um, they know us, they know us well. An underwriter buys up all of the bonds and then sells them. And to have an underwriter who understands us, they can market those better and we will get a better rate for them. So at this point, it does not make sense to go out to looking for another underwriter. We need them um, to understand us well. And, and they've been our underwriter for many years. So potential savings, you're saying we might save about 440000 For it's a By now, it's a little... Uh, these two are about 400000 I'm looking at a couple others um, that may save us another twenty, thirty thousand. 30000 But the 400000 I don't want to uh, fixate too much on that because by the time the... Um, they're sold, that can swing change. wildly. <coughs> Frankly, I'm just hoping we get this done in, in, in time that it disappears because it, the window came open so fast. Um, we, I have talked to uh, all of you through emails, but just so everyone knows, the budget in a w is uh, put on hold right now because the budget is something that traditionally has been passed in the second meeting in July. I'm still hoping to get it done, um, but March has to be nothing but bonds um, because if there's a way to save four hundred thousand dollars of money that doesn't cost anybody anything um, that's where finance has to be spending its time right now it's it's essentially free money um, in, in terms of no I shouldn't say free money it's essentially money that's not costing us to get except my time so I need to right. devote my time there Great job. Thanks. So, Kent, they're all current current bonds that we're just refinancing. Yeah, so it's, it's a one that was issued in 2005, one that was issued in 2009, and this one, there is no new money. Okay. Later on, you are going to be talking about a different bond, an IEPA bond, and the Water Commissioner and or I can speak to you on that. That's a different situation. Okay, thank you very much. And as uh, Mr. Oliver uh, explained to everyone, this is something that uh, we, we spoke in great detail about, and we felt that this was the better way to go, the better use of his time, yes. was to try to save the village money. Right. So, um, what do we have next here? We have uh, the fire committee, Trustee Michaels. Uh, I have a list of bills and time sheets. It's all I have for fire. Under police, I have the list of bills and time sheets, and I do have a I do have a little comment that was brought up at the last meeting about uh, some of the um, uh, violations that were going around in the Joel Joel area, and um, uh, Chief Miller uh, handed me this in the response to complaints for the various traffic enforcement problems on Joel We initiated a special traffic enforcement area on Joel from Costner to 115th Place. This program was initiated on February 23, 2017. To date, there has been approximately 50 traffic stops in that area and 27 citations in issued. One of those 50 traffic stops, almost half were residents from the area. Most of the stops were for stop sign violations and speeding. And uh, that's all I have from police. Public Works, Trustee Michaels. Uh, I have a list of bills and timesheets. It's all I have for public works. Building, Trustee Michaels. I have a list of bills and timesheets and a request for approval to refund two permits for masonry repairs at 12715 and 12716 South La Crosse Avenue. Total refunds is $160. It's $80 each permit. I request for approval of a variance for a six-foot high fence in front of the building line at 44. 43 West 124th Street, and presentation of the February monthly activity report. <coughs> you have to bear with me a second here. No problem. Okay, this report runs from 2117 through 22817. Amount collected was six thousand five hundred and thirty dollars and twenty-five cents. The estimated cost of construction was seven hundred and thirty thousand one hundred and forty-four. Total number of permits issued were twenty-nine. 
Uh, that's all I have on your building. Thank you, Trustee Michaels. Uh, sewer and Water, Trustee Dezel. The request for approval of the engineer's recommendation for a final payment to LGS Plumbing, amount of $92,297.73. That's for the 120th and Central Park Water Main Extension. Also, the request for authorization to purchase water meters at a cost not to exceed $39,446. This purchase is for the ongoing replacement of residential water meters and has been appropriated for in fiscal year 17. The request for the approval of an ordinance authorizing the Village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, to borrow funds from the Public Water Supply Loan Program. That's what the uh, Finance Director had spoke to. Also, the presentational list of bills, uh, employee time records, and the February 2017 uh, monthly activity report. That's all I have, sir. Thank you, Trustee Dezel. Uh, under license, Trustee Ryan. The uh, License Committee requests approval for a list of licenses dated today, March 6, 2017. We had a few new business license applications. One were, <clears throat> the first one's from Woodwork Refined. They're going to be located at 5917 West 115th Street. This is a manufacturing company. Second one's from A Plus Wireless. They're going to be located at 4002 West 127th Street. This is also known as Metro PCS Cell Phone Store. Next one's from Physicians Immediate Care. This is a new facility at 4800 West 129th Street. And the last one I had was for Kenna uh, LLC Incorporated. Uh, they're at 5145 West 123rd Street. This is a truck repair business. And actually, right before the meeting started, uh, Madam Attorney, I was talking to the village clerk. This was slated for a uh, planning and zoning meeting for the 8th. And I don't know that, or do we want to approve a license for these folks before they go in front of planning well, and zoning? Actually, that meeting has been canceled, been canceled. because um, they're just continuing and uh, the current use on the premises they don't really they don't need to go through zoning okay um, there was a mix-up or they so were told that because there was a change in ownership they had to go through zoning but they don't because okay so uh, am I okay to approve this yes now? okay all right that's all I have then economic economic development trustee Ryan uh, we have a presentation of the activities report uh, actually we've got members of the um, Manheim Group, uh, Chris or Roger, could you uh, address the, uh, the board? Thanks. Good evening. Good evening. Hang on a second. Um, are you on? Okay. Don't hear you. Get a hold that in, Roger. Or Chris. There it is. Okay, now I get no? no. It takes a while to warm up. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's on. I didn't need to know anything different. <laughs> The uh, first part of the report uh, we will handle in executive session. We have a number of um, requests uh, to bring to you regarding property acquisition. Uh, as far as TIP applications, so we have one that uh, we plan to uh, uh, bring to the March EDC meeting tentatively uh, uh, the uh, first or second week of March, the 21st, 22nd, 28th, or 29th. Now, if that receives positive uh, recommendation, a positive recommendation from the EDC, it then goes to the village board. Now, we are still meeting with them. Uh, they are in the process of uh, securing uh, an escrow account to assure the village that whatever we put into it through the TIF district, we have uh, a third party assurance that they're going to have the cash to do what they need to do. So we're waiting on that. Um, a couple of the others we've talked about publicly before, Elsa Blondmore, uh, Roger's still out getting his bids. He, showed, he physically showed me two bids, so he's getting there, guys, and he's talking, he's talking with our buildings department. Uh, same thing with uh, uh, Studio K, uh, Checkers, um, and uh, Demon Dogs, and Official Cuts. These are all businesses uh, right in and around the same cluster, uh, much in the same area that we're talking about some of the property acquisitions. So those are all moving ahead. Um, also, uh, we uh, uh, are in contact again with El Coyote to begin work. Uh, they hopefully they'll be able to start work in the spring, but their agreement, I believe, um, is expired. So we have to sit down and work with them and get them in the in the loop again. Uh, as you recall, uh, there was a uh, development agreement with them uh, quite a while ago, right. and they didn't operate on it. So we have to move ahead. 
Okay. Of course, uh, there's always this is a reminder. Uh, we keep our tracking sheet of prospects and existing businesses that are interested in plastic rear quarter on the uh, the, the uh, village system. Uh, some of the other prospecting, we are working with another company, as you see, uh, uh, another grocer uh, uh, for the uh, one of the sites that we have designated. Um, facade design guidelines. We've gone back. Roger specifically has gone back to. Uh, the uh, Hitchcock Design Group's uh, recommendations, and we're putting together some additional guidelines there. Each one of the uh, Pulaski Road um, uh, applicants or potential applicants have asked for those specific guidelines so they can move ahead. Business recruitment. Uh, Roger and I will be attending the March 14th uh, International Council of Shopping Center Midwest Idea Exchange Program at the University of Illinois, uh, something that's part of our this year's contract, so it's just a standard procedure um, for following through. And of course, we continue to target uh, various businesses in and around uh, that we think will fit in and around the Plastic Rail Quarter. A few other details there that uh, you have in the report, and you all have copies of these. And uh, uh, that's it for the night, Trustee. Thank you. Um, and Any questions? Uh, no, but we do have a lot of students in the room, and I always like to get everybody up to speed. What we're, what we're talking about here, the Mannheim Group's main focus that they are being paid through is at uh, Pulaski Avenue TIF. We're trying to enhance our business community over there. And not only are we trying to entice new businesses coming in with possible property acquisitions, but more importantly, we're trying to help the existing businesses with um, improving their facades. So we do have a program out there right now that that's what he was talking about with the applications that typically, uh, Roger, it's, I'm, I apologize, Chris. Chris, that um, it's it's <laughs> worse. No, I know, I know. <laughs> but it's a more or less an 80-20 split is, is <laughs> what we've agreed to for the existing businesses if they have a TIF eligible expense that we can help them with and so that's forth. That's correct. Okay, so that's that's their focus and that's what they're doing is they're trying to help our existing businesses as well as bringing new. Okay, thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> We have the uh, special committee reports, uh, village properties, Trustee Michaels. I have a list of uh, bills, and I have the update on uh, the plumbing issue at Heritage 2. Uh, I have a letter from Roger Early, the village properties manager, and it reads as follows. I would like to update the mayor and the board on the plumbing repairs at Heritage 2. On February 21st, we were notified of water coming out of the ground near the electrical service and telephone service. We responded thinking that they were dealing with a water main break. Unfortunately, this was not the case. The six-inch storm line was cracked and the tree roads. Upon further investigation, we realized that there is a second break on the opposite side of the concrete. We called out Burke Plumbing and called in for, for a Julie marking and then proceeded to hang and dig in the appropriate areas. Upon inspection, the exposed pipe, uh, it was determined that the entire line leading up to the 12-inch storm main would need to be replaced. We then further inspected the 12-inch main uh, and manholes. The manholes were completely filled with mud. Um, we further inspected the 12-inch uh, manholes, uh, okay, and the rocks and other debris on the top. Once Burke Plumbing cleaned the manholes out, we were able to see that the walls of the old brick and mortar structure had filled. I asked Burke Plumbing to replace both the damaged structures and precast, precast structures. The 12-inch main was completely clogged. I asked Burke Plumbing to perform riding, flushing, and jetting to try to break through the clog. None of that worked. So I reached out to Mike Freyer and Public Works Department. After discussing using a chemical to loosen the mud, Mike sent out Greg Fandel and Greg Keith Molitor. They thought that uh, their jetter might work better than using a chemical to break through. They gave it a shot, resulting in it being able to get through the main flushing out of the mud and debris all through the all the way through. There was a 12-inch main open up to a 15-inch main, and it was found that someone had run a 10-inch sanitary line through the center of the 12-inch main upon a 15-inch at the other end. This is another issue that Burke Plumbing had to address. I asked them to install a third precast structure with a three-foot bottom, essentially creating a lift station in order to allow the water to flow properly. Burke Plumbing worked six full days on the project to complete it. I, worked, I want to thank Mike Freider, the Public Works Director, uh, Greg Frandell, and Keith Molitor for their assistance in bringing the resolution to our project. If there's any questions, please contact Roger. 
Uh, thank you, Roger, for that report. And that's all I have on our village properties. Insurance Trustee McGreal. I just have an update from Human Resources. Um, Human Resources is currently updating the Blue Cross system in regards to section numbers within the plan. So some employees may receive new Blue Cross cards. Um, so that's just going to say that your section number has been corrected, but your coverage is not affected. And if anyone has any questions or concerns, so please contact Kathy Franson and Human Resources. That's all that I have. Thank you, Trustee. Mm -hmm. Ordinance and legislation, Trustee Dizel. No report. IT, Trustee Ryan. Uh, in our last committee meeting, we d discussed the infrastructure of the village's uh, telephone lines. So I'm going to get back with uh, our IT committee and the um, department head, the, the, our IT manager, to discuss um, incorporating that in our next year's budget. Because I know we're on hold with that. We haven't been, anything's been submitted. But um, he did give us an understanding. This is more than just switching <coughs> phones. It's about updating yeah. your lines at the same time, infrastructure-wise. So we're going to look at that. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Ryan, boat launch? Uh, the boat launch is due to open April 1st. Usually uh, that's the first day of the year. Sm uh, smelt season starts. Uh, and I did, um, Mr. Hardy, I, I did mention to uh, Public Works that uh, you'd be available if, for any reason, they need some additional help opening up. Um, the boat launch for the season. So that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Under planning and zoning, I have a presentation of the minutes of the February 22nd, 2017 planning and zoning meeting and a request for the appro approval of an ordinance granting a zoning text amendment for a truck and bus storage and repair industrial zoning districts. And as the uh, attorney mentioned earlier, the Wednesday, March 8th meeting has been canceled. Uh, under human resources committee, no report. Are there any presentations, petitions, or communications before the board? Uh, I've got one, uh, Trustee. Uh, as you previously mentioned, I appreciate the efforts on the police department. I had an opportunity a few weeks ago to meet with a lot of the residents over on um, Jean and Joella Street, and they brought that to my, our attention about the speeding. And uh, we appreciate, I reached out to uh, Chief Rads, and I appreciate the efforts made by the police department to uh, handle that. Uh, also, I've been in communication with um, the school superintendent, Mr. Gwaltney, for, for the last several weeks, and uh, we have a tentative date scheduled for a traffic safety committee for next Monday. I'll post this with the village clerk for uh, 6.30 p.m., uh, March 13th is what we're shooting for to do that. At that time, um, Mr. Gwaltney's got some plans. I don't want to get in front of his plans, but he's uh, discussing the idea of maybe moving the buses off the street uh, to make the streets a little more um, vehicle friendly to try and help that. Chief Rads also wanted to have some input into it. He had some ideas as well then too. So we should be able to have a few people there uh, as well as the committee and certainly the public is wel welcome to join us at the same time for 6.30 next Monday night. Excellent. Okay. For our traffic safety committee is what it's called. Thank you, Trustee. Uh, Trustees, are there any items you wish to remove from the consent, consent agenda? You know what, um, before I ask to remove it, I just want to find out, do we have any plans or anything on the uh, item for P, which was the uh, six-foot variance for the fence in front of the, the building line? Do we have uh, what type of fence was going to be put there or where the fence was going to be marked on that? Uh, they have a full survey. <coughs> Uh, of the of the area, and all they're doing is replacing an existing fence. Okay. And the reason for the 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 the, the, the uh, variance was because originally the first fence when it was put up didn't get the re uh, variance. So the person who's going to be putting up the new fence caught that and said that uh, needed to go before the board for a variance. Okay. And, and so that angle cut is to provide sight yes. distance for the driveway. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to remove H and I. <coughs> hmm? Right now, I remove J already. Okay, uh, uh, trustees. Um, I'd like to get a motion to establish the consent agenda. So moved. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you add in the remaining? A should read $381,627.43. B should read $1,170,252.84. G is now ordinance number 2017-3-1. <clears throat> H has been pulled from the consent agenda. I has also been removed, and so has J. K is now resolution number 2017-3-R-1. Roll call number one, Trustee Shapiro. Yes. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Motion carries. I'd like to have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk. Roll call number two to approve the consent agenda as presented. Trustee Shapiro. Yes. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Motion carries to approve. Going back to the three items that were um, removed. H, the approval of an ordinance granting a zoning tax amendment for the truck and bus storage and repair of industrial zoning districts. Um, yeah, could you tell me a little bit more about that? Like, what is that amendment going to do? Um, yeah, this is the one that um, the board approved earlier, giving me the authority to file it on behalf of the village. Um, this was a result of a suggestion that came about at an economic development committee meeting. Um, right now, truck um, storage and repair is a permitted use in all industrial districts. What this amendment does is make it a special use. So in the case where you happen to have some industrial properties at um, more highly visible sites that we're perhaps looking for um, a higher level of development, those may not be p appropriate sites, but in other areas that are zoned industrial, it's fine. So it makes the use become site specific so that you can analyze whether that is an appropriate site for that zoning. So it's more appropriate for truck and bus storage where? Well, it, it's just saying that instead of truck and bus storage be, being able to go on any <coughs> industrial zone site, they're going to have to get an SUP so you can look okay. at the site itself. Okay. Now, just to clarify, this came up at Plan Commission. Existing businesses are not affected unless they plan on expanding the footprint of that use or if they cease use and try to reestablish it, they lose their grandfathering. But if they continue as is, they're not affected by this amendment. They're grandfathered. But any any new use would uh, have to follow the special use permit, and then the board would have a chance to look and see, is this an appropriate site for okay. truck uh, repair and storage, or perhaps if it's a visible site, it's maybe not appropriate. <coughs> so Thank you. That's the basis. It's actually a very, very good um, ordinance. Okay. Thanks for explaining it. Um, I will bring it up as a motion and for the approval of an ordinance granting a zoning text amendment for truck and bus <coughs> storage and repair in the industrial zoning districts. So moved. Second. You have a motion and a second, Madam Clerk. Can you call the roll, please? Roll call number three. Trustee Shapiro. Yes. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. That now becomes ordinance number 2017-3-2. Item I, approval of an ordinance authorizing the village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, to borrow funds from the public water supply loan program. Uh, question? Um, yes, if Dan, could you explain that to us more and what that involves? 
the APA loan program provides for uh, low cost loans through the um, it's actually a nationally funded pro you know, plan that basically you're going to get an interest rate that's half the bond market rate, which is currently 1.64 percent. So it's half of what you can go out to the bond market for. You're going to you know incur a lot of savings there, and it's going to be for the Keeler Trip Water Main Replacement Project. It's a neighborhood that's been in need of you know newer new water mains for a, a long time. Do we know how much we're going to borrow? Yes, it's in there. It's two million two hundred eighty thousand is the estimated cost. Again, that will go out to bid, and it likely be lower than that. If I understood that correctly, that's when we did adjust the water rates not too long ago. That actually helped us qualify for this loan, correct? Correct. Everything's got a cause and effect. That was the, that was what we that was our goal. Exactly. So that okay. you know, the the rates need to be raised so that we could uh, essentially qualify for the loans and get back in the black on our, you know, uh, budget. Absolutely. The, the, the rates uh, were set for operation co operational costs, but there really wasn't anything in the rates before that point for infrastructure replacement, and the infrastructure is old. So Absolutely. as you prior prioritize the infrastructure replacement, um, this is what's at the top of that list. Additionally, um, it's he is right, it's half of the rate, but it's actually half of the prior years, and as interest rates go up, it's actually less than half of the bond rate. So um, in these kind of environments, we would, I as a finance guy, would never suggest uh, doing the bond market. This is, it's a lot of paperwork uh, for Dan and a little bit for me. Well, Dan's doing a lot of work on it, um, but once you go through those hoops, this is a, a wonderful program that the state puts out. It's a revolving fund loan and they haven't lost any money from it. So they just recycle these loans, and it goes out for water and sewer projects throughout the state. I can't say that the state runs completely efficiently in many, many areas, but this is one thing that they do that's a, a great program. Now, you had mentioned that before when we had to make that adjustment, but I'm glad that worked out for us then, too, guys, because that, that was obviously that was our goal. Thank you. Any other questions? I just didn't know why there wasn't like an amount um, when it says borrow funds. It, uh, on there the, is on, an amount. It's, it's I mean, on the what we're voting on. Oh well. On the consent agenda. Because we're should that be in there, attorney? This is not, you know, you're not. This is just applying for a loan. You know, authorizing the mayor and the board to apply for the loan. We're, you're not actually, you know, obtaining the loan at this point. So when you apply, do you ask for a certain amount? Not really. I mean, basically, as the project goes forward, you get closer and closer. And once we haven't, you know, we go out to bid, then we will have a better estimate as to what exactly we're trying to borrow. Yeah, okay. You'll have another opportunity to opportunity right. construction estimate right now. <clears throat> Correct. So this is just authorizing us to proceed with the application process. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Uh, trustee, would you like to make your motion? Uh, motion to approve an ordinance authorizing the Village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, to borrow funds from the Public Water Supply Loan Program. Second. You have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, another call vote. After I write down the names. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call number four. Trustee Shapiro. Yes. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dwight, um, Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. That now becomes ordinance number 2017-3-3. And the only other item that was uh, uh, removed at this time was the approval of the resolution approving the commercial real estate purchase and sale agreement for Southwest Corner of 115th Place and Pulaski Road and that we, we, we may or may not be voting on after the closed sessions. Um, uh, trustees, is there any unfinished business before the board? Uh, at this particular moment in time, under new business, I would, I would like to uh, take the opportunity, um, because I don't know when I'd have this opportunity again, I'd like to thank the, the all of the residents in uh, uh, Alsip. Uh, for letting me um, be a trustee for 12 years. Um, we have one month to go before the uh, 
uh, next election, and so I thought it would be a, a, a fitting time, since I have center stage, to thank everyone. Um, I've enjoyed it. Um, um, my heart and soul is in this town. Uh, people ask me, why didn't you run or why didn't you continue running? Well, like anything else, it's good to step away from things and bring in somebody else with a new perspective on things. Um, but uh, I will tell you this. Uh, Twelve years ago, Miss Van Huysen and I, uh, we thought that, gee, this would be an interesting thing to do. <laughs> but, you know, it's a process, and the process is you learn a lot, and you there's a lot of uh, wins and a lot of losses. You you try to help the community as much as you possibly can, but you can never satisfy everyone. So that's a tough thing uh, sometimes to swallow. Um, the other the other misconception here is uh, all the trustees get along up here. Okay, <laughs> every every single and <laughs> yes, and the clerk. Every <laughs> single one of us trustees get along. We may not agree on everything all the time, but that doesn't mean I respect every single one of them. I think everything, every one of them uh, does a fine job. And for anyone, all the new people that are out there that are going to be running in this election, all I can tell you is speak from your heart, okay? Why are you doing this? What's in it for the village? Correct. You know, you can throw mud. Mud will stick sometimes, but mud can wash off. And people want to know what you're going to do for the town, what you're going to do to handle the budget and curb this heavy uh, pension deficit that we, we've inherited. Um, it's tough. It's going to be tough. And, of course, your, your, your life, your family is open to uh, ridicule. So uh, but I just, I just want to thank everyone. I, I definitely appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So thank you very much. And, and well said. Um, as Trustee Shapiro said, we started this 13, 14 years ago, and we put a lot of time and energy and I think I know a lot of love we put into the village, and we... I feel we've left it a little bit better than when we first walked in and whoever takes our place afterwards that's what we wish is that everyone just leaves it a little bit a better, little better a little bit better Thank and you. you'll always have us to talk to <laughs> absolutely we're not we're not going anywhere I don't intend to move <laughs> um, Next thing we have here, I actually I, we have um, we have two motions. Uh, the first motion in, uh, to go into closed session is to discuss the purchase or lease of uh, real property for the use of the public body, including meetings held for the purpose of discussing whether or not a particular parcel should be acquired pursuant to five ILCS one twenty backslash backslash two C five. And the other one is to go into closed session to discuss appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, and dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 Slash two C one. I would uh, make both motions. I'll second. You have motions and second, Madam Clerk. Roll call number five to go into closed session. Trustee Shapiro. Yes. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Motion carries to go into closed session. Um, and then. Uh, this meeting was held uh, uh, one hour prior to the one hour prior to the meeting. I had a root canal done, so I hope I didn't slur too much out there. <laughs> but um, but it was an experience. Uh, 
trustees, uh, we're going to be going across the hall in about 10 minutes. Uh, we we uh, will be coming back, may or may not be voting on something. In the meantime, thank you for coming. That's it for tonight.